Linda had a little setback, so let's continue to pray for Sister Libby's sister, Linda, sister. All right. All right, job interview tomorrow. Let's pray that this interview goes well. Amen. Sister, let's remember Kyle and Kenzie tonight. Mother, family, Sister Sharon. Okay, let's continue to keep John uh, in prayer. Did I see yet another hand over here? All right, let's pray for this nation, its leadership. Let's pray for Holy Ghost revival, amen, an outpouring of his spirit. Uh, I'd like for us to uh, just to keep each other lifted up to the Lord in prayer. Plead the blood upon your family and upon your church family, amen, just asking God to protect and keep from all from harm's way shall we pray gracious god we come to you tonight we say thank you lord for your many bountiful blessings again for all that you have done for that which you are doing thank you lord for being who you are for you are great and you're greatly to be praised amen thank you lord jesus for health food clothing shelter transportation thank you lord for the things of life that we have been blessed with in general amen things for which we oftentimes take for granted lord that proved to be overall added blessings to our lives amen thank you jesus for your love and for the baptism of your love for the baptism of your spirit thank you lord for the joy of salvation Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you, Lord, for the means, amen, and the ability, the wherewithal for which we have been strengthened to be able to overcome, to overcome, Lord, temptation, and to overcome the forces of oppression and depression, overcome, Lord, the forces of darkness. And so, Lord, we come through and by the authoritative power of your name, declaring victory, Proclaiming healing, Lord, for many, knowing that by your stripes we are healed. Pray, Lord, for Mr. Copley. We pray, Lord, for the leadership of this nation. Pray, loving Savior, on the behalf of Becky's brother, that you will continue to strengthen him in body. Amen. We pray for all who are out, unable to be at church this evening, some who have been sick, some who are in the process of recovering. Lord, we trust you to do beyond that of which we can possibly imagine as our trust and our confidence, dear Lord, be within you and you alone. Amen. Mighty God, let your spirit be poured out here tonight. Let there be an outpouring of your spirit that take place in and throughout our nation. God, let the hearts of many become convicted and converted. Amen. Lord, I'm praying, Jesus, amen, that the anointing of your spirit be upon our musicians as they play, upon the voices of them that be lifted in song. God, as we sing and in all that we do here tonight, it be, de be done in honor of you, amen, glorifying your precious name. We pray, Lord, for all and everyone who will be watching on live stream, Lord, that their lives be blessed and touched as a result of this service this evening. We give you praise and thanks for it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And to the Lord, let's give a voice of praise, shall we? Amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, he did it. And he'll do it again. Amen. He'll do it again. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in song. You can be seated if you'd like. Amen.
give to him that inevitable invitation, amen, through praise and worship. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Fill us full, Lord, here tonight. Amen. 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 Fill us with your power. Amen. I believe that God has given to his church all authority, authority over all the power of Satan. Amen. And he's given to you and I the power to tread upon the serpents and the scorpions of this world. Amen. That's what the word teaches. Amen. He has given to us power to bear witness of his glory. He's given to us power to overcome. Amen. He has given to us power. Amen. And may we all receive strength through that power here tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to take up our evening offering. We're going to keep the offering plates up here and ask that you bring your offering forward. And by way of via announcement, we still have some end time magazines available. Our bulletins are still here uh, along with our prayer request list. I would have you to know that on the back of these, uh, Sister uh, Tanya had brought it to my attention that there is a place for which that uh, you can uh, write down or jot down your little testimony if you should so desire to. You was lost and you've been found. Express and express how that is, or if there's, if you, God has done a miracle in your life, Amen. I don't know. That's what it, it says. Well, what is it for, Sister Tanya? They've been brought back. Okay. Well, we'll share testimonies too. How about that? In regard to healings and miracles, Amen. All right. God bless you as you give to the Lord here this evening. Look to your neighbor again and say, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over this. How many of you are over it? Amen. Amen. If not, let, why don't we just build a bridge and get over it? Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's worship the Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. My, 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 I give you praise. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. He is deserving of all the praise. Amen. I failed to make mention of sister, uh, brother and sister Jordan. Brother Jordan is having a procedure done tomorrow, so let's keep him lifted up in the Lord, to the Lord in prayer as well. Amen. Asking the Lord to keep him and also continue to keep Linda. And amen. I'm, I, I just want for the Lord to do a miracle in her life. Amen. But above that, I, I want to see her seated in this church sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. Worshiping the Lord right along with us. Hey, who here tonight just has, you just want to share a testimony with us? I'll testify. Testify. Hand him a mic. Sister Kathy Hawkins said, whenever she said that she felt safe in this church, she felt secure, she felt comfortable. You know, and you know, whenever I first got back into church, you know, I struggled with a lot of things from alcohol to drugs to cigarettes. I was delivered of drugs, I was delivered of alcohol. I did have to fight the cigarettes. And I had uh, James, I would, that was my, that was my go-to. And I would call James just bawling his balls. I bought another pack. I smoked one too, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, but, but, uh, Hillary, she was, she was a Sunday school teacher here at the time. And I would get her key to the church. And I would come up here by myself. And it was like, as soon as I walked through those doors, uh, it, it just stayed there. Nothing could follow me in. And I would just come in and I would sit right about where Sister Sharon is and, and I would just sit there for hours just completely free. I don't, you know, I don't know how to explain it. There was just no pressure. There was no you know, addiction. There was no... And, and I just felt completely secure, safe, and just free. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know, whoever it may be that may be listening on, on, the, on the interweb, whatever, but if, if you are bound by anything, you don't, really, you don't have to go through a 12-step process. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, or any, you know, but I know whenever I did come out of that, I got sick of myself. Brother Cottrell, I got sick of me, and I got tired of it. <laughs> And I stepped out of that aisle, and I would take one step up. I didn't even get to make it to the front. I would take one step up, and it was like the Lord would take four steps to me. I would take another step, and I was two or three steps, and then it, I just got slammed by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And, and I'm just, whoever it may be, if you are struggling with anything, you know, God is there to deliver you. He is there to, to walk with you through this. All you got to do is just get sick of yourself, and he will be there to All right. lift you up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many more can testify to the same? Amen. I, I, I guarantee you, when you're in the presence of the Lord, you are in a safe place. Hallelujah. My, my. I feel safe here right now. Amen. Wow. Why don't we continue to worship the Lord as they lift their voice in the special here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Bless Sister Shonda.
Hallelujah. I like that part. It may bring me low, but they'll never bring me down. Amen. You know, Paul made reference to how that will be cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. So uh, I thank the Lord for the word that challenges us to have faith and faith that can carry us beyond. It won't say beyond. You know, there's a time in Scripture to where that, that in one of the most challenging moments of Abraham's life, the father of faith, was called to take his only son and offer him up as a sacrifice. And when they had finally approached the mount for which he was to ascend upon, he had informed his servants to remain behind and others that were with him. And he said this, I and the lad go yonder. Amen. There are places that God takes us that are called yonder places. And they may be places of challenge, places of sacrifice, but God will always meet you there. Amen. Amen. And make provisions. He is the provider. He provided for Abraham then, and he'll provide for us now. I want to take your attention to the word of the Lord. Uh, as my daughter would say, right quick, right quick, like, real quick, real fast. She's not here to defend herself. She's probably listening, though. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I want to take your attention to the word of the Lord, reading from out of the book of Romans, Paul's writings, there from the 18th verse, beginning with verse 18, and then we'll read through 23. Let's go to verse 25. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children, uh, uh, of, the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth, Everyone say there's some groaning taking place. And travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen. Back to verse 22 and 23. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. I bless you as you're seated. I'm going to take your attention now to the gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. If you'll turn with me there. We see to where that in this particular chapter that the disciples are inquiring of the Lord and they are asking what should be the sign of his coming or that which would involve the end of the world would be and Jesus would answer and say to them saying I am the Christ and shall this I am Christ and shall deceive many for many shall oh, for many shall come in my name saying and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Everyone say the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and 
diverse places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. I want to teach tonight along the subject thought of repent, don't perish. Repent, don't perish. You know, there's much to be said in regard to last day events. There's much to be said in regard to this recent pandemic and that which concerns the uproar and the pandemonium that, that is taking place in and among humanity as a whole. The violent and the violent and vehement behavior or demeanor of mankind as it be displayed out on the streets. There's just, just a great deal that is happening that I believe to the church it should catch them in no way by surprise. Reason being is because we have the prophetic word of God to lean toward or lean upon. Much in regard to that that's taking place today is none other than Scripture being fulfilled or the Word of God being fulfilled. Now, a lot of people, they question, and they question if God be the God of love, then why such events and astrono astronomical events concerning that which involves nature as well as that which involves the behavior or demeanor of mankind exist. But such things happen and all is to be traced as far back to that of the beginning of time where Adam fell. And when he fell into sin, the word of the Lord declared then that the day that Adam would eat of that tree that he would surely die. But there was a curse that took place. The ground was cursed. And there was the sorrow for which would exist during the time of birth giving. And uh, the sorrow would be none other than that which be, would be experienced not through birthing pangs alone, but through that of the loss of any that would come to be loved. So some of the disasters within the pages of God's Word are found to be itemized and itemized in this supplication and also itemized in supplication whereas lawyers of today is concerned they will label them acts of God hence we have insurance how many of you were grateful that you had insurance during the time of the recent hailstorms to cover the cost of your roof you know this was as they would call it a natural act or an act of God and so this legal phrase becomes a legal purpose to declare that no human being therefore would be held responsible for the damages that take place or for the act that compels and compels one of that need to pay or to pay a price. You know, the term acts of God may solve some problems, whereas people are concerned or concerning that of the lawyers of today. But it creates somewhat of a problem whereas theologians are concerned, or rather a problem which already heads and heads the list of all problems. And that problem overall would involve relationship. Relationship. Relationship with man and relationship with God. Amen. There are people when such disasters take place, 
that they will attempt in every way to shift blame and blame upon a neighbor, blame upon another, or even so much as blame God and put censored to where it does not belong. Yes, a curse did come, but had man from the, the very beginning complied with the law of God, then we would not have these problems. We would not have these issues. And so I believe that with every sign that comes, with these signs, it can prove also to be none other than an act of God's grace to help remind us that we are a people capable of perishing. Amen. Bear with me. You see, in a legal sense, they originate in a non-human cause, which are beyond human control. You and I, as great as we may think ourselves to be, need to be reminded quite frequently and quite often that we're not as big as we really think ourselves to be. More times than not, we may desperately attempt to resolve problems and matters on our own, apart and away from God. But when the matter is found to be much larger than that in which we are capable of resolving, then we are reminded again that things perish. People perish. Amen. And so, <clears throat> take what we will or may in terms or in light or in reference to our surroundings, the earthquakes that take place, the tornadoes, and God knows we've had more than I share in just the past recent year. The hurricanes, these natural events that transpire, and we might even so, go so far as saying fires because a great number of fires are ignited through lightning, and lightning is found that of a natural cause beyond that of man's control. There are just some things in which you and I cannot control and will always find to be beyond that of our control. We will not be able to control the temperament of mankind as a whole. Amen. The only way that man's temperament is controlled is if man is willing to submit to its creator. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we, in terms of pestilence or that, in terms of plagues at times, medical science, we see to where it has been responsible in measuring to some degree a certain amount of control. But we are and have only scratched the surface, whereas any type of control is concerned in regard to plague and pestilence. I, I approached a minister not too long ago, and I, I made the statement, and I could be theologically incorrect, don't think that I am, but it's possible. <laughs> You, you, uh, I, I feel as if that some things in regard to famine, pestilence, is none other than an act of God, or very, may very well be what God permits to take place, and there'll be purpose and reason behind it all. Amen. Isn't it strikingly amazing at how that when some astronomical events from a natural standpoint takes place, that man and woman alike seemingly become spiritually alert or alarmed 
to the point of which that they began to make some move toward church or some move toward God. And just when it's all smoothed over, it's as if nothing happened at all. And they return to doing the things that they had done before. And they find themselves within a life of wanting to appease the sensual desires of their flesh more than do that which is right and lighter in reference to making the spirit man, amen, what it is to be in relationship with God. I'm of the mind to believe tonight that such things happen at times if for no other reason. It is to remind man that he is still limited. It is to remind man that he's still small. It is to remind man that he too can perish. Amen. The days of our lives are numbered. There are times for which we may think ourselves indispensable. We may think ourselves immutable. We may think ourselves invincible. But church, we are just flesh and blood. Amen. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. Not in this life. Amen. So, <laughs> we battle a great number of things. Battle and murder are definitely, however, acts of mankind. But we cannot control man just as much as we cannot control, amen, nature itself. So, so we, it, it amazes me at how often our attention and our attention seems to be focused more so upon the disasters than the one who is able to preserve us from disaster. Amen. Disasters which originate, amen, in both a non-human and human situation or cause and which are entirely beyond that of our control. Be it earthquake, be it storm, be it lightning, be it fire, be it tornadoes, be it war, I can assure you these things have been, will be, and will be to the day that Jesus comes. Amen. And be as it will or may, God at times can use these things as an instrument to draw humanity into a place of realizing that they are limited and are in dire need of repenting. Amen. So I, I feel as though that there are times for which it proved to be none other than an act of God's grace in operation. I can't tell you the number of times that I've had close calls. How many of you have had close calls in life that you know of, that you know about? And God only knows of the ones that you don't know about. Amen. But it was none other than an act of God's grace and protection that was there with you, that kept you from harm's way. Amen. And in those moments for which that I did have close calls, those close calls that I knew about, I would catch myself examining my spirit, checking my spiritual walk and relationship out with God almost instantly and immediately. Say, Lord, forgive me. I want to be ready. I know I'm not the only one that can vouch to this. Amen. But I thank God that he has given to me the sense enough to respond to such. And keep in mind and realize that it was probably none other than an act of God's grace that protected me. Amen. And then also to remind me again that I came that short from losing my life. Came shy from perishing. Amen. Maybe in this physical body, but could have spiritually as well. 
God help us to, to allow for such things to serve to you and I as only a reminder that we have time, amen. And the time that we have is none other than the long sufferings of God at work within our lives. Amen. Let's give to the Lord a round of applause, shall we? So, when we began to examine these things, the problems, as they are at time problems, if the God who loves us is also the ruler of all nature, we may question, why do such things ever happen? Let us say, first off, okay, along with that of the Apostle Paul, we will only know in part. There are some things for which you and I may never know. Amen. But thank God we know in part. The world of nature tells us some things about God and the ultimate purpose of creation, but not all. Nature has a world of ready wealth. Our minds and hearts, it has blessed. Spontaneous wisdom has been breathed by health. Truth breathed by cheerfulness. And by nature, one might then learn and, amen, be mindful. And mindful always of the fact that these things happen for a reason. In most instances, both good and bad. Amen. And will inform us far more than that of a sage individual is capable of informing us of. The biblical teaching is that the natural order is in a state of disorder. God says to Adam, the transgressor, because thou hast eaten of the tree, the ground is cursed. Amen. And it's cursed for thy sake. Thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. We find this in the book of Genesis, written and inf informing us by that of the prophet Moses, Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. Now, whether you interpret this literally or if you take and, and take it figuratively, it means at the very least that the miseries which now abound in both the world of nature and that which involves the lives of men are the consequences of the world's having been alienated from God. When man seeks to alienate themselves away from God, you can always expect bad things. Amen. Always expect bad things. You know, God is the one who keeps you and I in check. The Word of God is what keeps us in check. The Spirit of the Lord quickens our minds at times. Amen to what thus saith the Word of the Lord. You've heard me state from behind this pulpit before in time past, and I reiterate again here this evening. I thank God for those moments to where that when my flesh with desire and attempt to do one thing, the Spirit of the Lord would quicken the Word to my mind only to remind me that if I do such a thing, there will be dire consequences that follow. Right. Amen. Only to remind me that I am capable of perishing. Amen. And so, the Word allows or it keeps me in a state of repentance. Amen? So, in one of the most profound statements or writings that the Apostle Paul, as we have read already, it brings the natural world into the scope and purpose of Christ's redemption, as is found from out of chapter 8 in the book of Romans. Paul observes that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Until now. Amen. It's still groaning. I said it's still groaning. 
Let's assume the truth of this view. Of nature sharing with man the bitter fruits of the fall. What sense can we make of an earthquake? I know that man is invariably attempting to explain things away. Anymore we hear of climate change. And that climate change has a great deal to do with our mass thunderstorms and even has an effect upon the earth to the point where that there are earthquakes. You know, I've stated before and I, st I will state again, there has always been earthquakes. Someone says, well, there are more earthquakes. How do you know? Now, Everything tends to be more on a magnified scale today because of the immediate access that we have to social news. And I'm, the, mankind can use that as an instrument of fear and will attempt in what way they can to smite our hearts with fear. If for no other reason... I believe that there is an evil cause backing it, and that cause would be to gain control over humanity. God forbid that we allow for the media to gain control over our lives above that of God himself. God should be the main governing force within our lives. I said this Sunday morning, and I can't help but, amen, reiterate or put emphasis upon the need to do so again. So we have to keep in mind and maintain a level sense. And it will bring us to the point and the realization that there's just things that happen from a natural standpoint that will remain inexplicable. We will not be able to explain these things. Floods, hello. One thing for certain, he's not going to flood the entire earth again. But we do read to where that the earth shall be destroyed by fire and the elements found therein will melt with a fervent heat. That's the word of God. You know, can we explain how that's going to happen? No, we don't know if it might, that, that by chance it may very well happen from a natural cause. Amen. They, all this belongs to God, and God will eventually destroy this world. That's the word. Amen. But a world which chooses to continue and continue to alienate themselves apart and away from God and his divine presence, even if it thus involves itself in torment, must suffer and will continue to suffer these tyrannies, these terrors, until its own fury against God is overpassed. Oh, God help us. Amen. So, this preacher said, no, we live within the dispensation of grace. God will not permit and allow these things to happen. Well, it's too late. They've happened, and they will continue to happen. Amen. And say, well, <clears throat> and then I finally ask the question, has it ever dawned upon you or perhaps even has entered into your mind that by chance, that certain things happen, if for no other cause, to introduce man to God's grace, helping them to realize that their lives can perish. Amen. So the groaning creation we are surrounded by, the evidences of a conflicting existence, a state of being not all evil, Certainly, certainly not all good. All things about us show the wrestlings of two orders. Paul said it well. All things work together for the good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. 
all things, be they good or bad. Amen? So, who find on our earth their battleground and arena of conflict? The whole creation groaneth. Time is the great school of suffering, and life is the great teacher. There is much to be learned from life in general. My text that I've read from here this evening points and directs our attention to a suffering world, but this is God's pathway to restitution. Man, if they so desire to, can allow for such an instrument to lead them into experiencing restitution or being reconciled back to God. The earnest expectation, all the agitations of the world are the earnest of its need and need of rest. And what foundation has the groaning world for its expectant waiting for a time of restitution? Ultimately, it's going to end in our complete salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. The foundation is in the fact that the ransom has been paid and peace has been proclaimed to a revolted universe. Ransom has been paid by our Creator. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Amen. And peace has been proclaimed to this revolted universe, and it has been brought to us by none other than our Creator, Jesus Christ. He gives to you and I a peace of mind that passes all understanding. We may not comprehend, and we may not understand fully nor completely. Amen. All and everything that is transpiring around us, but in the midst of it all, we can still have a peace of mind. And we can still encounter the power of God's Spirit as it will, amen, aim overall to restitute and to reconcile. Amen. Thank God for reconciliation. Amen. God is forevermore wanting for man to be restored to him in relationship. And we'll say in relationship. And so we are hearing, we are hearing well the groans of creation, the tones of wailing, uh, amen, over the fall of man. And as a result, some are still experiencing restitution and reconciliation. Amen. I, 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 my hopes are is that with what is happening, humanity is, is becoming more spiritually alarmed and alert to the fact, uh, hey, this thing's about to sew up. Amen. If it doesn't, God help them that they would at the least recognize that every man's life will perish. Amen. It's true. It is appointed unto every man wants to die. Don't you wish it would stop there? But it doesn't. After this, the judgment. Man will be judged for his deeds. Man will be judged according to his works. So to that hour of restitution, all things are pointing. What is our Lord doing now in his high and holy place? He is expecting till his enemies become his footstool. Amen. That day's coming. Look out. And God is calling for his church to continue to look up and to look forward. There is no ignorance implied in, in, into any of this, but a pausing until the fullness of the time shall come. It's coming. The crime of his enemies will only be his threshold to more illustrious and exalted power. His time of showing power is soon to come. Amen. Now, I'm going to bring to your attention a few more verses of Scripture uh, I'm reminded of a passage, I believe it's found in Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13 and 
beginning with verse 1. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. They won't say evil. Evil man. That the evil in which Pilate performed here was beyond that of man's control. But take note. Amen. It goes on to say, he said unto them, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, no, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Then he goes on to say, or those 18 I, I, I'm of the mind to believe that had the Lord so desired to, he could have provided a litany of events and things that may have transpired, if not then, either prior to that, letting every man and woman before his hearing that day to know, except you repent, ye shall likewise perish. Amen. So those he makes reference to here upon he goes on to say whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem I tell you nay the essence of that meaning this that there are sinners in Jerusalem still and they are just as sinful as others and he goes on to say, except you repent, you're going to perish. Amen. Now, such acts of grace and mercy can keep and keep one if necessary, meaning that such events of travesty may be to some and to some a lesson of grace, thus causing or displaying an appetite for a want. In other words, when we see enough evil, I believe it should affect us to the point of which that we want to escape evil. That we should develop a spiritual appetite of some sort that says, I don't want to perish. Amen. And so an appetite or a want for repentance that would necessarily or that is necessary to keep us from perishing. How many of you want to perish? How many of you want to suffer eternal damnation? I'm of the mind to believe that most all of us are there tonight. None of us want to perish and suffer eternal damnation. Amen. Or at the least, I hope so. But keep in mind, we have to live within a continual state of repentance. And everyone say amen. Amen. Now, I want to bring the prodigal into this picture. Now, some of you are probably wondering how in the world does the prodigal fit into this picture. But if we go, I believe it is Luke chapter 15 where he, the prodigal is referred to there. Let's begin 15 and verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. Notice. And he began to be in want. And he began to be in want. Now, when we look into this passage, this excerpt of writing, we see and we witness one who strayed. And as a result of his stray, there are some natural things that began to take place. For one, famine. The other, he has expired all his funds, that of which he had inherited and inherited from the hand of his own father. And after having done this, Scripture lets us to know that he went and joined himself to a citizen of this foreign country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. For one, swine was looked down upon 
by the Jews. And so this is obviously something that is seen and looked upon in a despicable manner, whereas the Jews is concerned. However, the man has, to, has had to settle and has had to settle for less than what he wanted to. And he, he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, <laughs> when he actually came to the end of himself, when he came to the point of realizing that there's no more that he could do. You know, I, I, my prayers and hopes are is that as long as I'm living this godly way, that I never get to a place to where I exhaust or have to exhaust all my energies, that I have to expire all my funds before my attention is drawn and lured to the heavens. Amen. So, Jesus here delineates, amen, the kind of life the prodigal had been leading. With characteristic delicacy, he does not give details. He leaves it for the elder brother to do. We have the picture of a young man wasting his time. We have the picture of a young man wasting his money. And what is worse than that is wasting his life. And like most young people who think to live that way, finding plenty of both in terms of gender to join up with him, he is self-willed, he's self-indulgent, he's riotous, and we are just on the point of labeling him contemptible. We are just on the point of thinking how to one, amen, like Jesus, the prodigal must be infinitely loathsome. When suddenly a single phrase, as we have read before our hearing and out of this passage here tonight, will be brought to our attention and will arrest us. Amen. We see that in this phrase, it opens a lattice into the mind of Christ and makes us suspend judgment on the prodigal when he came to himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Natural causes, what man provided was just, just within a short period of time exhausted and suspended. Hello. And we see now that the prodigal, as a result of all this bad that took place, has it brought to his attention that in his father's house, the servants there have more than he does. Amen. Hallelujah. So when he comes to himself, in light of or in reference to his then surroundings, the advanced circumstances, amen, of insurmountable odds brought him to and brought him to an end of himself. That money was expired, friends were gone, and much was dying. Both of what man and nature provided ended with one message, and that message was repent or perish. Repent or perish. And where did repentance take him? It took him to a place of making an about face and redirecting his attention to where the Father was. I want to preach or teach tonight, amen, that if there's anyone out here, anywhere out there in radio land, don't wait till something traumatic takes place. Don't wait till a tra travesty transpires in your life before your attention is drawn and lured to the Lord. Amen. Realize that when you see these things happening around you and taking place, it could prove to be none other than an act of God's mercy and grace at work in your life. If for no other reason to lead your attention to the fact that God has still provided for you an ample amount of time to repent and get things right. Amen. 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 Don't wait. 
Don't wait till it's too late. I hope that this message, this lesson is making sense to a number of us here this If any of you have, eat, have in any way contemplated the thought or the idea of just throwing your hands up, giving up on God, then you ha are making one of the most serious and worst mistakes of your life ever. Amen. You know what? You need to get to the place to where you just give up on yourself. And when you give up on yourself, that's when you can really get, get it all lined out. When you realize that, you know, there's but so much I can do. And once you have exhausted your energies, once you have put forth the, forth the best of your efforts apart and away from God's help, amen, it'll only take you so far. But once you reach the end of that road, you can reach wit's end, but you don't have to reach faith's end. That's when faith looks up, and that's when you become alarmed, and you reach your spiritual senses to the point of which you realize that, that God has provided and provided for his household. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too many people perish today. But Sister Kathy, the earth is groaning for a reason. There are the mishaps of life that take place at times for a cause. And if it's for no other reason or cause, it might serve and serve well in the capacity of just simply reminding us, hey, we got to repent or we're going to perish. We got to repent or we're going to perish. Where does repentance lead you? To truth. Where does repentance lead you? It leads you to un an understanding. And if you're not quite there yet, you don't have to understand everything just as of yet. But you can reach for it. Because with all you're getting, get understanding. Amen. And God can bring to you a sense of understanding that none other can. But if there's any understanding for which one is in dire need of attaining here tonight, it is the understanding of this fact alone, that unless you live a repented lifestyle, you're going to perish. You're going to perish. Amen. Well, I'm coming to a conclusion or an end of this message now. So I'm asking all of us to stand, if you will. Repentance leads us into a place to where that we accept and receive to ourselves the whole counsel of God. Amen. Leads us to a place to where that we don't want just for part, we want it all. Hello. We want everything that God has for us. That's where true repentance leads one. You know, you can't be partially faithful. How many of you are married? And if your spouse was just partially faithful, that you would label that person entirely and totally faithful. Some of us would have problems with that, would we not? Yeah. Can you imagine, can you fathom with me for just a moment how God feels at times? Yeah, and we, we just turn our backs on him, and, and we're of a mind just to do what we want or choose to do, Brother Cottrell, and it, it doesn't work. Partial faithfulness is not going to get you there. So, well, you know, I can't live a perfect life. You may not live a perfect life, but you can certainly as well, with God's help, live and lead a spiritual mature life and a spiritual mature life will add a moment to where when you do fall you realize you don't have to stay down there you can get back up and go again hallelujah realizing that hey if i don't 
It will be down there that I perish. But he don't want you to perish. I, uh, so I, I, I don't know if I helped any or not, or as the minister was concerned, but I, I want him to know that I feel as if that some things take place. If for no other reason, it could very well prove to be an act of God's mercy. You know, when 9-11 took place, church houses were filled. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing how, how travesty could suddenly ha have an effect upon the mind of an individual realizing that, hey, you know, relationship has always been a problem. God desired to have relationship with man from the very beginning. Yeah. Well, one might ask, why did he even allow for the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of both good and evil to be placed in the midst of the garden knowing that man would be tempted by it? Because he wanted man to choose to have a relationship with him. Can you imagine Daniel trying to force you into having a relationship with him? You probably wouldn't buy into that very well. He can't force you into doing anything. I know that. I pastor you. I know. That. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> this is pick on Tanya's week, isn't it? Sunday night, tonight, ball. Don't get offended. No, really. If I tried to force my wife into doing some things, <laughs> you hear my dad laughing. <laughs> yeah, I... I if, if between now and Sunday I tried to force her into doing some things that I want her to do, yes, sir, very much so. In fact, if I were to show up Sunday, I might not be able to see any of you. <laughs> God doesn't force us. He wants to love us into this. Love us into, and you better thank God that with every travesty that's ever taken place, if he spared you, he has spared you again and given you an opportunity to become spiritually alarmed of the fact that, hey, it's either continue with repentance or perish or perish. Amen. Well, I love you. Why don't we just reach out with outstretched arms and thank God tonight for his word, can we? Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for caring for us. Thank you, Lord, for ministering. I pray, Lord, for this world. I pray for the people, Lord, that are found within this world, Jesus, that are looking, that are searching, that are attempting in every way to find, dear Lord, and as they are looking to find, that they will find indeed. As your word is promised, Lord, seek and ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. Amen. Let someone, let someone, some way, somehow, would have received tonight, amen, that which would prove to be spiritually helpful. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you is my prayer and dismissal. Thank you for being present here this evening. Let's continue to remain in prayer for all who are out and are struggling with uh, various forms of flu, sickness. Now we're finding out people are just getting flu, common flu. So, all right. <laughs>